Good artists copy, great artists steal. Interior design. Yep, that's what we're talking about today. Recently, interior design TikTok has had some drama. Um, a sentence that I didn't think I would say this year. Because it's such a niche situation, we're going to choose your character. Tay Bibi, a DIY queen and influencer who designs and DIYs her 120-year-old home and shares these maximalist projects with her large following. Karen Joy, another DIYer who shares her interior design, crochet, and fashion projects online with her large following. For the sake of this video and so that my tongue does not spontaneously combust by trying to say tape boop boop multiple times tape tape woo tape Mm. I'm just gonna refer to her as Tay. Tay came out with a video accusing Karen Joy of stealing her designs and ideas in some of her TikToks. We will watch the video together, but it did not receive really good attention. We'll be jumping in the scary hole of art plagiarism versus inspiration, and we'll be navigating these things so that we don't find ourselves in a similar sticky situation. So howdy, welcome to my YouTube channel, I'm Rumble, yay! For those who don't know me already, I'm an artist and a fine art student and I make videos just about that. So if that interests you, you might want to stick around and give me a subscribe down below. And today we will be diving into interior design TikTok. Well, not diving, more like sticking a proverbial toe briefly into the world of interior design TikTok. I do not know where to start. I don't even do interior design. I'm not even on TikTok. I actually don't know why I'm making this video. I saw that there was some drama happening in this role which was confusing because it was so big that it ended up being spoken about by people outside of interior design TikTok. But as it focuses on Tay accusing Karen Joy of stealing some of her design projects and plagiarism, I'll be using this news as a little background to have a thinking session. I think it would be an interesting thing as artists to talk about because copyright is a very serious issue that we have to be conscious of in our journeys. But before we get into this video, make sure you like, subscribe, turn on the post notifications so you're notified when next I upload a video. Last video I posted, I think I said that we went to 1.5 thousand subscribers. Now it's over 2,000. What is happening? I don't understand. I just want to say thank you so much for subscribing and supporting right now. It has been amazing. Enough sentimental stuff. Let's get on to the video. I'm about to be so petty and I've never done something like this before, but there is a large creator who is just getting out of hand. So this is my mossy mirror that i made and immediately she makes this okay let's get this out of the way there are a lot of similarities between some of the things that tay pointed out here for example the blue and green combination um the green squiggly line etc etc but if you post DIY, aka do it yourself videos on your channel showing how you did your project, the links to the resources that it took to create your certain projects, wouldn't it be part of the package for people who follow and watch your content to want to emulate the stuff you make? Back when I was a little youngin, I was obsessed with DIY King, His Majesty, Mr. Maker. I wanted to make every single project specifically the ones where he made crafts that look like food and i really wanted to eat it and i tried it once and it actually like made anyway um i fell in love with diy youtubers and i always wanted to make their like school stationery hacks or all their diy i don't know pencil holders i have been on the diy side of content for a long time as a consumer and every time i watch it it's because i want to create that and i want to see how to create it and if not i want to live vicariously through the people who are creating it to know that I too can make it. But all I'm trying to get at is for the most part, the history of DIY content, or at least for me, has always been set up in a way that the content creators are making content to show that they were able to make this project and you too can also make it. Okay guys, so this is how I baked an apple pie. Hey, that's a really good apple pie. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I really like it. Actually, here is the recipe that I used as well as the list of ingredients. Oh, score. Thank you. Approximately 10 hours later. Hey again. So I baked this apple pie that you made last time and it, I think it turned out really good. How dare you bake my apple pie? But you gave me the recipe? Exactly. 
my recipe. Am I missing something? Just because I gave you the recipe. You gave me the ingredients list too. Just because I gave you the recipe and the ingredients list does not mean you get to create that pie, even though I gave you the resources on how I made the pie. Taya seemingly had a problem that her projects were being copied. And I won't really comment on that specifically because some people have been following receipts and checking the dates and found that some of the things Karen had before Tay posted so the timelines aren't matching up and also it's kind of confusing to accuse someone of stealing your ideas when some of the things that she was stating were on Pinterest and have been already made like numerous times so it's been a trend that you didn't create also wouldn't imitation be flattery in the DIY world. So that's where the situation lay and a lot of people came to support Corinne because of how Tay decided to come to the public with the situation even though she admitted that she had already been DMing Corinne behind the scenes and that she had been very nice as well in her messaging following that Tay deleted the video admitting on her Instagram that she should have handled these matters privately to begin with. But at that point the damage was already done. Karen had released her own video on her TikTok it might still be there and i think to be like a content creator on here some of that comes with if you're branding yourself as a diy channel do this yourself here's how i did it here's the links for the supplies and then to say no one can be inspired off of you is just wrong and I think this is also where I got confused. As an artist, I'm also very sensitive to plagiarism and I'm very cognizant of it. It's always so unfair when someone gets their ideas and hard work plagiarist, and which is why I made that AI art video I did. And also plagiarism and stealing of work and false crediting has been a large occurrence on TikTok. I think time.com really said it well in their article about this whole interior design issue. It was so big that it went to Time's website. Like Karen says, how can you be angry if someone copies your work when your whole entire business model is, I made this, this is how you do it, this is the links to how to make it, XYZ. Copyright or plagiarism is quite different to visual arts, which is what I do, because very rarely, if not ever, you will see in a gallery next to the artwork how to create that art piece. What is shown in an exhibition is the outcome, not the process, which is different to DIY projects and DIY content, where you see both the process and the outcome. And although art is rarely, if not never, I may argue, not inspired by anything. For the most part, plagiarism in terms of copying a work stroke by stroke is considered art theft and plagiarism is morally unacceptable. In that case, they may be claiming it as the authentic original piece or that they were the original creator of that style or that artwork. The art model in visual arts is not creating art so that other people can replicate it. It's not. Then again, having a big DIY creator doing your projects or projects you think are inspired by yours without tagging you and it getting a large amount of likes and views may be unfair because they end up profiting off of that video and I think that's where Tay was coming from. Seems like and this is coming from an outside person like I said I don't know interior design TikTok. Their model their world is very communal in the sense of there's a lot of trends and a lot of interior design TikToks especially the maximalist design designers follow the trends and make it their own so it'll be common to see people's styles overlapping with each other and even Karen points it out in her video. Also wonder would Tay have made that video if Karen had 2,000 followers instead of 2 million followers? What if there's smaller creators or people who don't even make videos who copy Tay's work which she also have a similar reaction? Or is it the fact that she has a big following and she may profit off of the large views? I don't know. In the comments also people clocked weird vibes from how Tay mentioned that Karen had used her wallpaper, Tay's wallpaper, which she had created in partnership with OTTO or Otto. I, I don't know about that one. Otto announced on their social media that they've removed Tay's line of wallpaper from their stores following this whole drama and after that Tay released a video apology which I personally think was not bad at all considering the lineage of apologies that have graced this internet since the dawn of time. My behavior has been wild and inappropriate and I apologize it's taken me so long to realize that. 
but people noticed the convenient time that this apology was uploaded seeing as it was after she got dropped from Otto. Inspiration or stolen? There's a blurred line between plagiarism and inspiration that I too for the most part am not really sure of. I for one am inspired by a lot of things in my art and although plagiarism is defined as presenting works or ideas from another source as your own with or without the consent of the original author by incorporating it into your work without full acknowledgement you would rarely see something in a gallery presented side by side with a full list of credits to what it was inspired by in music if a song had sampled a sound they may put in the credits link to that sound but you won't see the same thing translate into an art gallery. For example, now there is a very particular form of figuration or figurative painting that has become very trendy, which is black figurative portraiture in a very particular way, which is like black people being painted really well um, in front of very colorful backgrounds, which may be like flowers or patterns and designs. A lot of these have been inspired by each other. A lot of you won't see in the gallery a list of who they were inspired by. Maybe you may hear it from the artists themselves when you participate in a walkabout where they talk about their work. For the most part, it's just like you see it and then you're like, ah, okay, this is probably inspired by da 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 da. Does not mean that plagiarism does not occur in the art world. It happens very often. And I think even in the example I just gave, but I don't know, it functions differently. I feel like the difference is that you are inspired by something, but you still take the step further to transform it and make it your own own instead of just copying it. As a rule of thumb, if you are really inspired by something, then use it. But make sure to transform it into your own thing because it is so boring. Absolutely excruciatingly boring to have the exact same thing replicated over and over. We can spice it up. Especially if you're a younger artist, like we have the potential to do literally whatever we want. So long as it doesn't like involve crime, but <laughs> it kills two birds with one stone if you do that. First of all, you avoid like the repetitiveness of work and you are avoiding potential future copyright issues and drama and being cancelled. In my heart, I'm heavily inspired by a lot of different imagery. For example, sci-fi imagery, futurism, synthwave music, metropolis, soft punk, even that episode episode of Teen Titans where they had that really catchy song and like they turn into like this cool 80s synth type. These have all heavily inspired my process but I've also transformed it into something that is my own and it's been really fun to work through. However, and this is coming from someone who is outside of the interior design TikTok world so it's not like my word is being aware that someone is bound to create your DIY projects that you post online. I feel like it's part of the package because it's do it yourself. It's not D-I-M, do it myself or D-I-M-O-N-Y-Y-P. Do it myself, not you, you pig. I, I think it's so heartbreaking to have your work being stolen by a creator and a part of the DIY world is the shared learning that happens on the platform. So instead of, you know, trying to gatekeep your DIY projects, it should be celebrated and it should be admired that people want to create your things because I think it's a good thing. I'm gonna shut up here and I wanna hear your thoughts on this whole scenario. If you have any other uh, videos that you want me to talk about or any topics you want me to cover, leave it in the comment description down below. My socials are also down below to my instagrams i have a personal and also my art account if you want to see thank you so much for watching if you like the video like if you like me subscribe comment down below all that fun jazz and until then i like to be educated but i'm so frustrated hello to my loneliness i guess that in the real ah thumbnail okay um hmm.